All right, well, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Noji Ratzluff. This is the monthly meeting of the Utah Valley Amateur Radio Club, and we welcome you here tonight. Tonight is our annual DIY night, do it yourself. So guess what? I'm not gonna do anything. You're just gonna do it yourself. But we're just gonna have fun doing it yourself. Anyhow, um, let's go ahead and kick this meeting off. And, um, oh yeah, so we're gonna do things just a little bit different. Number one, we announced that at the end tonight, after everything's over, we're gonna go to um, Fat Daddy's Pizza for those who can make it. They are not gonna be open tonight, so we are instead gonna to go to Lucy's. It was, it was a quick last minute fallback, so those who can come with us and want to, and no, I'm not gonna pay for your pizza, but Lucy's across the street over here, if you wanna come with us. Uh, number two, um, Uh, there was something else I forgot. It'll come back to me, I'm sure. So, um, um, oh yeah, that's right. Um, let's see. Could you come up and announce your announcement, please? Not you, but the guy behind you. You, standing up. Please come forward. Hey, my name's Ross Hunter, K7AF. I live in American Fork. Uh, my son-in-law is moving, and he doesn't want to be bothered with taking his tower down and, and moving it with him. Uh, it's a U.S. tower, crank up, 55-foot crank up tower. On the top of there, uh, one of the elements is missing for a Cushcraft uh, A3, is that what they call it? Yeah, uh, tri-bander. That's what it looks like when it's cranked up, and there's a, so right on the very top there, there's also a dual bander, VHF, UHF antenna. It has a rotor and a rotor controller, plus the tower, <clears throat> and uh, that's what the crank looks like when it's nested down, and so you can crank it. In fact, I can tell you, it takes 95 cranks to crank that thing up 55 feet and you're huffing and puffing by the time you get it there. So most people put a motor on it. <clears throat> and that's the base of it. So basically what the deal is, he doesn't want to be bothered with messing around with it. And uh, this tower, if you bought it new, it would be in excess of $3,000. He's going to let it go for 500 And if you're really dead serious, you might be able to even negotiate lower than that with him because he really wants to get rid of it. But if you look at the base of it there, uh, it's kind of a triangle layout there on the bottom. You can see that bolt sticking up that's alone there. What happens is you can, un, uh, you can crank it down by taking the three bolts loose and the two bolts on the top of the other, and then you can just lay the tower down after it's cranked down. And uh, I've got a, <clears throat> a, a, a mast, a thing that you can crank it down and, and undo that if you have to. If you want to but the idea being is he doesn't want to you've got to be responsible for providing your own manpower and hauling it off the property and uh, I can tell you right now mine I got exactly one just like it let me see if I got a picture of it here somewhere anyway uh, of course you can't find it so anyway it weighs 700 pounds cranked down. I had to have about 10 guys haul it off the truck and, and lug it out into my backyard. And uh, uh, so uh, you know what you're up against if you just get serious and want to have this tower because it's really a good deal because if nobody wants it, he'll just end up having somebody cut it up and haul it off. So Ross, can, can that 700 pounds be sectioned apart? No, no. It okay. cranks down. As you can see this picture, it's all cranked down. I lost the picture of, the, of it uh, looking when it's nested down all together. But uh, you can lay it over, unbolt it, and uh, can physically be hauled off, but you gotta have the ability to put it on something that'll hold the 22 foot long, 700 pound mass. Any questions? To get to it? What's that? Can you get a trailer to it, for instance? Yeah, we can get a trailer to it, or, yeah. And, uh, so if it'll haul 20, you know, 700 pounds, then most traders can haul that, but you gotta have something that, for 20 foot, 22 foot long tower. <clears throat> and uh, so 
His name is Chet Ferry, KJ7YQ, or you can contact me. I'll just be sitting over here if you're interested in it, and I can give you more information. But uh, it's a fantastic deal. He's an engineer, and he's been too busy making money the last 10 years, and he just hasn't used it. The wind blew the antenna part up on top, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with the tower. <clears throat> and uh, the rotor and uh, controller, that probably works too, but he hasn't done anything with it for a long time. So that's how that stands. You just have to be responsible for hauling it off the property and dismantling it. And I've got a, a winch thing that you can lay it over and hold it that I can help if you, if you want to and, and attach to it. And anyway, any questions you have, I'll just be sitting over here and I'll give you his phone number, everything. Okay, thanks. thanks Ross. Yeah, I, I, you, you can still try and put it on Facebook? Okay, so. Thanks, Ross, appreciate it. Okay, next up is Carrell. All right, a couple of things. Um, we got a great crowd tonight, considering there's a basketball game and a football game on tonight, we got a great crowd. Um, I know everybody's got their little own thing. I'm back here. Anybody that's not on QRZ, I'll be back there to help somebody if they are not on QRZ and they want to know how to get on QRZ. And I'll help you get on QRZ. I'll be in the back table. Um, lunch bunch. Let's see. November 11th. Feast buffet in Orem. Where is that? Anyway, 1428 North State. Um, up where? Yeah, I know, but I, I'm, I'm trying to, I never heard of it. So anyway, that's up there above 1,200. I think we've been there before. It's just a different name now. Oh, is it? Yeah, probably have. Anyway, November 11th, get primed all, get all primed up for uh, Thanksgiving here at the, uh, at the buffet. Veterans Day. That's, yeah, that's Veterans Day, yeah. Oh, boy, that's not a good day to go to a restaurant, <laughs> giving all those veterans free meals. I never go. Um, okay, anyway. We always have fun at the lunch bunch. Um, next thing here is Santa Net on the 7-6 repeater uh, on Christmas, uh, Adam and Christmas Eve. That's the 23rd and 24th at, he keeps putting 6 p.m. on here, but I think it's 7. It's 7 p.m. It's the same time as the net normally is, 7 p.m., and we'll fire up the uh, 9090. So if you're out of town, want to get on Echo Link at Star K7 PB Star, or can, can get directly on the 9090, or if you're in town, put the kids, the grandkids, whatever, and come talk with Santa. It's a lot of fun. Um, even if you just get on the uh, get on the uh, repeater and listen, it's a lot of fun. Hey Carl. Yeah. When you um, allow, like, let's say I allow my two nephews to talk with Santa, do they both are they both allowed to use the same call sign, like my call sign? Aren't you an extra? Yeah. Don't you know about third-party rules? <laughs> I guess not. I guess not. That's that question. <laughs> okay. If you're if you're in, if you're there, they can they can be there in your third uh, their third well, yeah, party. Yeah, that I knew. I'm just making sure like they can both. Yeah. 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 I love giving him a hard time. Ever since Nick died, I just love giving him a hard time. Um, I got one more. I got one more item that's not on the agenda, and I asked Noji for permission on this. And I know you guys want to get started with your DIY stuff, but starting in hopefully January, if we can get all our ducks in a row, we want to start a new net. And I've already got some people that are interested in this. And if you want to be part of this, let's call it a committee. Call it a committee for this net. Um, it's going to be. And some of you heard about this because we mentioned it before on the seven six net and, and a few other places. Uh, it's going to be a net focusing on urban disaster preparedness and survival. So this is not just a preparedness net or not just a survival net, and it's not about wilderness. It's about being in town and surviving uh, uh, something in town. We want to get two or three net controls involved. We haven't set a date yet. We've talked about a couple of different uh, times. We might be doing it once or twice a month. Uh, yeah at least hopefully, and uh, we'll be looking for volunteers to do training items. And I've developed a list of training items. 
Uh, we want to do the five phases of um, emergency disaster preparedness, prevention, mitigation, preparedness, response, and recovery. So we want to cover a lot of topics. And so the suggestions that I put up here are water and storage and use, precautions, sanitation, food storage and preparation, utilities. You know, what happens if the power goes off? You know, utilities, fuel, sanitation. That's one of the, the things that gets forgotten a lot. Uh, uh, why, how, and precautions for sanitation. Security, which is not talked about a lot, except in the urban settings. Um, hygiene, uh, knowing what to, um, knowing when to bug out and when not to bug out. We, you hear a lot about sheltering in place or bugging out, when to do those two things. Um, so there's a lot of topics here. Uh, first aid, emergency kits, uh, legal and financial uh, suggestions, uh, redundancy in supplies and, and tools and equipment and th different things. Um, working on the mind, having a mindset for it, and, and, and uh, the ability to assess situations when they come up. Uh, making preparation uh, a lifestyle, talking about things like that. Um, uh, turning thoughts into actions. Uh, a lot of us think about those things. A lot of us even might have food storage and different things, but we don't think beyond that very far sometimes. And so uh, making it a bit of a lifestyle, turning, uh, being prepared before, during, and after a crisis, uh, managing how much cash uh, you got on hand and things like that, which might be a problem, uh, cooking when and where to cook, um, things like sell by, use by, uh, sell by, use by, and use before dates on things, not just food, but other things, and, and knowing about those. Tools, what tools to have around, first aid, medical, go bags. Uh, we talk a little bit about go bags. We won't talk a lot about ham radio in this net, really we won't. The three Ps, uh, prepare, prevent, and protect. Um, then there's the, the 10 steps to safety. I won't even go through all of those, but uh, being prepared, but don't look prepared. Uh, is one of those that's kind of a bit of a security item sometimes. Illumination, light, having light handy. Um, sh shelter, if you have to shelter out of your home and not in place, what kind of shelters and, and suggestions for that? Um, what, what do you take? We've heard a lot about this in the news. What do you take when you only got 15 minutes and you got to go? They're telling you you got to get out. There's a fire or a flood or something coming. What to have? What to have? And th those kind of questions. Um, and what is the best uh, uh, disaster preparation, uh, the three-day, the 72-hour kits? And we'll talk about the, the top uh, 10 or 15 natural disasters and the top um, 10 or 15 man-made disasters. And you might be surprised at some of those. And so we got a lot of subjects that we can talk about and suggestions for training topics. Uh, and so I wanted to rattle those off so you kind of get your wheels turning. And so if you want to be a presenter for a five or 10 minute uh, training topic at the, on that, those nets, we'd be happy to have you. And if you don't know about it, there's plenty of things online, plenty of books to read, lots of library books, stuff on it, and you can and, uh, learn about it as, as you uh, prepare for it and, and give us a little dissertation for five or 10 minutes on that, on that net. So I just wanted to run that by. Anything else I forgot? No. Okay, I talk too much. <laughs> It was a, Michelle, you're up. Oh, activities. Yay. Okay. You're putting me to sleep. I'm going to smack you over there. Okay. We've got the potluck coming up uh, next month, and I will get that list going this weekend. Friendship Center, if you guys don't know where it is. Next building over is the Friendship Center. That is Thursday the 7th at 6 p.m. It is potluck, guys. Have some, we'll have a sign-up sheet going here, hopefully by the weekend. Um, then Winterfield Day. Yay! Yay! Okay, how many trailers do we need, Noji? Three. Two. We need two. All we got one. Okay. Or we'll have, we'll have ours. One. So we we're down to one trailer needed, guys. Do I hear? <laughs> um, digital will be back into the Puma, which is ours. Carl will have uh, um, his. So we'll be needing one trailer. Um, Chad already knows his home. <laughs> so Winterfield Day, Saturday the 27th through the 28th. We'll be running uh, 24 hours from setup. We'll be at 12, or no, what time setup? Early as we can on Saturday. Early as we can down at Linda Marina. 
Um, we will need help putting up stuff, and we will help need taking down antennas for that day. Um, so, yeah, come and have fun with us. Get on the radio if you've never been on. And dinner will be provided that day, too, if I remember right. Yeah, pizza and, you know. Yeah. Is that dinner? Munchies. Munchies. Yeah. Munchies. Yeah. So come out. It's a great experience for new hams to get out on the radio. Um, give these guys a break that have been on the radio for a long period of time. So, yeah. Noji, you're up for exams. Don't we usually plan that on Noji's birthday? Usually we do. We'll see you later. Yeah, you're welcome to you know, bring me something. Thank you, Michelle and, and Joe also. These two guys have got to go home. They, they take care of a minor emergency, so they're excused. Um, Michelle is leaving. <laughs> All right. So before I say anything, number one, I, I, the, the thing I forgot was this gentleman right over here, Brent. So um, we're actually going to do door prizes, not at the end of everything, but at the, the beginning. So just as we're going to get started with our DIY stuff, and I promise you we'll get there, we're going to do door prizes before that. And that way, when we're done with everything, we can just clean up and leave and then go to wherever. But So we'll, we'll do the door prizes right after this thingy here. Um, Meanwhile, I just want to mention, um, oh yeah, so <clears throat> I, I made this little antenna up here, just a little show off. Um, this is um, an inverted L um, um, double trap um, um, and, and fed antenna, and it's a, a, it's a POTA antenna. And so what it is, the whole thing is 14 ounces. It's very, very light, very small. Um, it's nothing but, as you can see, um, um, speaker wire with a few little ele electronics here and there and it was fun to make and um, uh, You can work the entire world with this antenna. It's an amazing antenna And I'm, I'll write it up and you guys can see it later in the in the newsletter anyhow Wonderful antenna just go ahead and check check it out. You can see the different over here um, behind Sean's head is the onion That couples the, the coax with the antenna and there's two traps along for 20 and 30 meters But anyway show off, okay? So um, we do have some ham radio exams coming up, sessions from November 15th, November 18th. Those will all be published and put, put online and so forth, at the, and, and they'll be held at the Provo Fire Station. And we have our next technician course starting in January. There you go. Also, we have another um, ham radio exam session coming up this coming Saturday, in case anybody has missed their chance. Well, you didn't really miss a chance. There you go. This is your, your turn. Next up is Karen. Okay, so for service, it's kind of our slow month, our slow year, slow end of year. And so, you know, um, we appreciate those that get up on the You Cares Net on Tuesday nights. And um, we have our interface that will be coming up this coming Tuesday. Um, I believe they're talking about... wildland prep things, I believe. Um, but, you know, we'd love to have you come be a part of You Cares. It's a, um, a great organization, gets you out there, um, works with your radios, gets you prepared for um, when that um, whatever happens and you're ready to pick up that radio and come out and help us out. So, um, again, Right after the first of the year, we'll start planning for the 4th of July parade and all of our fun events. So next up is going to be... Well, before that, did, is there, did you, are you prepared to mention a certain thing that's going to happen in January? <laughs> Only if you want to. So in January, we are putting together... Um, how did this start? We had, we came up... And a couple of months ago, we put out, we have a messenger, um, our You Cares messenger group. And right now that's our main kind of little chat box that, you know, if you have questions, you can get on to messenger and ask a question and most of us are monitoring it. 
So we put a thing out there that there was a, a set, I believe it was an earthquake that had happened. We asked everybody to come up on the 3-4 repeater and um, we were gonna start a staffing net. Well, we have right now, I believe, 185 ham radio operators registered in UCARES. And of those 185 UCARE members, we had 35 come up on the frequency and check in. So that's a little bit concerning, you know? But I'm happy that 35 got the message, and so that was where my point was, is how, um, how do I, because I am the emergency coordinator for UCARES and for Utah County. How do I get the word out to you guys that I need help? Um, when we had the lunar um, eclipse here just recently, the state EOC, Emergency Operations Center, were put, was put at a level two. And I was notified that they may need help with ham radio operators. Well, how do I get, how do I get that word out to you? How do I let you know that I need help? And so right now, um, me and my team are putting together um, kind of a notification. And so we are gonna roll that kind of program out um, in January. So we're gonna do it January 2nd at our UCARES um, interface. And then we will do that again at, at this setting that Thursday um, at the UVARC meeting here and we'll do that presentation so that we can get the word out to you and you guys will know how that word's coming out, where to go, and when you get on that frequency, exactly what we wanna know. So if it's a staffing net, I'm gonna wanna know, I'm KG7UUR, I'm in Provo, I'm available for the next six hours. That's all I wanna know. And then you'll wait. And so we'll just kind of go over those things like that. Hey, Karen, is it going to be like an app that you guys are developing? Or like how? No. What, so what, what is it exactly? Is it like a, is it still going to be on like Telegram? Or like, what's the yeah, idea? Yeah, we're still going to do, we're still doing Telegram. We're not getting rid of that. We're just coming up with a better way to notify. Okay. You know, a real earthquake has a way of um, waking people up. And that's it. If it's a, if it's a, national, a, a natural disaster, I can tell you everybody in this room is going to know to go to the 3-4. Is there a way to acknowledge that, hey, we've received it, but we're, on, we're not available at this time? Um, so that you know that out of the 180 people, that 170 got it? But that's what we're working on. Because so right now I don't. Yeah. Um, but that's what we're working on the next couple months, putting this um notification system together and then um we'll roll that out to you guys and let you know yeah like she said she's the emergency coordinator so she is actually the boss of aries in our county and it's our privilege to have her here with us she, she's amazing I can't believe how much, how little sleep she gets. All right, next is Sean. All right, I'm really excited about this because this is one of my very favorite times. I get to announce all of our new hams. For the, so, whoop, I hit the wrong button. There you go, you're back in, you're back in picture. The down arrow. The down arrow, yep. okay. Not the down arrow. I messed it up. It's okay. No, it's a Okay. For this, we want to congratulate all of them. Any new hams actually in here tonight? You want to stand up and... Yay. <laughs> Okay, and your names, real quick. Uh, I'm Tyler Castaldo. Okay. And Lily Stice. Okay, you know your call signs yet? Yep. Yes. Perfect. KK7OYP. And? KK7PBS. Fantastic. KK7 Public Broadcast Systems. I know, that's, that's great. 
long. So um, also Lee and Sherry Hill were here earlier, but they had to leave suddenly. Okay. So they were they actually showed up too. Okay, so we were missing two that had to leave early, and we had no upgrades. So until next time. Okay, let's jump over to the door prizes. First, we'll jump right back to the DIY. Brent, take it away. Okay, so normally, normally I like to have someone come up here with me, but since we're kind of in a hurry to get DIY night going, we'll just, I'll just quickly uh, bang this out. Um, we're gonna do something a little bit differently this year, or this time. We're not gonna have any main prize, or we're not gonna have any main prizes. We're just gonna have all of our prizes here at once. We've got the Pockerus J poll. We have a $25 gift card to where? To a, a location that's secretly hidden within the envelope. To a location that is secretly hidden within this envelope. <laughs> stretch, and, stretch and seal tape. These are healthy ham radio snacks that are designed as peanut M&Ms. Have those. <laughs> Gorilla tape. Power cord. Power cord. If you plan on doing some kidnapping, I don't know. <laughs> Flashlight. Club light. Or club light, sorry. Right. And a two-way handheld transceiver. Bell fan. All right, so if you hear your number called, just come on up and pick whatever prize you want. And you got to pose for a picture. Yes, and then you have to pose for a picture. Don't say that number. That's not the right one. Okay. Three, eight, five. Three, eight, five. All right, I'm going to go through these kind of... Well, no, I can't do that, can I? By all means. Hold on, hold up here. There we go. Okay. There we go. Four, one, three. Boom. Oh, right up there. Turn around. Hold up. Hold up. Four, zero, eight. Four, zero, eight. Come on up. Club Light, 403. 
403. All right. All right. All right. Thank you, Brent. Okay, if you did not get a door prize ticket, raise your hand. <laughs> You're late to the game, sorry. All right. Let's have fun. Do it yourself. Yeah, just do it yourself. So over here we've got, we've got Anderson power pole connectors we can do. Um, there's also an, an antenna analyzer, a tiny spectrum analyzer. We've also got a, a nano VNA. On the next table, we've got soldering iron, soldering station, and of course, solder. Um, we've got an antenna show off over there. Kent and Stan are doing something. Over here, we got Craig with, a, with the, his own antenna. And I have no idea what Matthew brought. Matthew? So if you brought Anderson power pole stuff, I can put mine away. Or you could do two. And then, uh, what'd you do, Gary? Uh, he's got an antenna he's going to show, and, and what did you have, Craig? Several antennas, some equipment I put together, and I can show people how to solder. So soldering station, antennas, and blah, 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 blah. Very good. All right, have fun. Your program radio is in the back. Oh, yeah. Um, Ralph is back there if you want your radio programmed. Thank you very much. Oh, by the way. Usually they specify in like a regular table. That's stainless. Stainless class, so it's not fair. It's not gonna, oh, no, I was talking about the connection between the smaller leg and the smaller leg. Why don't you try to get it on? Oh, on. sorry? Yeah, start with You're talking about the, this one? No, it's the actual leg here. It's gotta be this one? Oh. It's gotta be this one? Oh. So it's like an empty quarter on it. It's gonna be upscaled. Okay, yeah, so they, they, they can range. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. So, 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 um, you can go all the way up to um, 45 on that. But these are. This is a two meter antenna using copper foil. And. Um, it's made by taking two inch paper, putting it on a spiral, and as you're taking it off, you mark it with a marker, and that's where this marking's come from. And then I trace that with my two, with my one inch foil, and uh, this is the long side of this three. Sixty to forty meters, and get one coil, and then we're going to pass away. 